game and a very impressive win over Florida and Louisville. What a run. Purdue, Nebraska for the very first time in program history and also their in-state rivals from Kentucky. 24th meeting all time and Florida State does hold the advantage with 14 wins but it has been Louisville that won the last meeting. They played only once last year. Louisville will be in their home black uniforms. We're playing in the very friendly confines of the L&N Federal Credit Union Arena, formerly your home, Jen, when you played at Louisville as well back in the mid-2000s. And here's the aforementioned Tori Dilfer to get things started. 5'11 graduate student out of Los Gatos, California, taking her COVID year and helping to lead this Cardinal team. Immediately, Florida State with a couple of good defensive touches. But Amaya Tillman with the throw down out of the middle. The 6'3 junior out of Topeka, Kansas, having a fantastic junior season. And we're going to talk a lot about the Louisville block. You saw they got some phenomenal touches to make sure that they're in transition offense. Elena Scott picking up that balls, but it was Amaya Tillman who was the one-two punch for Louisville out of the middle. Another quick opportunity, and Jones off the edge of the block, kept alive by the Seminoles. And missing out of the back row, that is Anna DeBeer, and a quick early look at Elena Scott, wearing number 19 in the white jersey. For the Louisville Cardinal, 5'9 freshman, out of right in your hometown of Louisville, and going back to serve is Emery Dupes, 5'6 freshman, out of Marietta, Georgia, outstanding libero for Florida State. That's a nice swing in the deep cross court corner. Nicely done off the outside by Chasse. And Claire Chasse, although she's a bit undersized, she has a heavy, heavy swing, a really powerful arm. She can get around that block easy. Good athletic jumper as well for Louisville. Had 18 kills in the rivalry match against Kentucky. The six foot senior out of Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, but did struggle on Friday night. Their win over Miami was just one of ten before she went to the sideline and gave way to Nena Mbanu. Officials just making sure things are right. Just underway. Best three out of five sets. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday around the country. Sunday afternoon in Louisville. Scott with a nice dig on target. There is the block once again for the Cardinals. And you see that Tessier tried to shoot that ball out to Morgan Chacon, but Ico Jones was met penetrating the net, and that is something that Louisville, again, does very, very well. They've got very high numbers in the blocking category. Give you those in just a second. Nice play out of the middle. Good response for Florida State. Right now, Louisville, the third-ranked team in the nation in terms of total blocks per set, 3.3. Number one is Penn State. Number two is Maryland. And speaking of Maryland, made some headlines when they took out number two-ranked Wisconsin on Friday night. There's Lots Danny Busboom Kelly. Yep, well, what a career she had at Nebraska. Action. Yep, and exciting and interesting weekend so far around the country. Coming on, Audrey Koenig, 6'3 freshman out of Wesley Chapel, Florida, for Florida State, who did not make the tournament last year in spite of the fact that they were 14-5. and five. But as we were talking, Jen, a quick reminder that because of COVID, there were only 48 teams in the field last year in Omaha as opposed to the usual 64. The reigning ACC Freshman of the Week, Elena Scott, the Libero back to serve. What a beautiful push by Alexa Hendricks. Out of position five, notice that Elena Scott is in position six, making sure that she's taking care of those balls out of the seam of the block. Talked a lot about the defense of Florida State, and rightfully so, but Alexa Hendricks, 5'7", junior, out of Louisville and the school that produces so many defensive specialists and liberos, Assumption High School, with that nice pancake to keep the ball off the floor momentarily. Oh, nice job out of the middle. 
And the first look that time at Anna Stevenson, the ACC Player of the Week, 6'2 graduate student out of South Carolina. And she has kind of an unorthodox arm swing. You see it kind of looks like a hook, but it is just as rapid and just as effective out of the middle. Her numbers have been incredibly efficient. Nice play off the left side. Kill that time by Koenig. Talked about Stevenson right now hitting 454 so far on the season. Average is just, uh, just under three kills per set. First team all ACC last year. Second team all American. Good first contact led Florida State to get into a nice rhythm offensively and able to put that ball to the floor. And Lewis out of the middle does a good job of recognizing that Louisville's defense is kind of prepared for those heavy armed attacks deep corners. So they're covering a little bit deep and leaving a big space open in the front of the 10 foot line. Boy, that is a nice swing down the line by DeBeer, but she starts out with a couple of errors, one out of the backcourt, out of the pipe, and this off the left side. DeBeer's last year ACC Freshman of the Year and honorable mention All-American, having a very, very strong sophomore season today. Good passing by Louisville. And don't you love it when a setter comes right back to a hitter in the repeat after an error? Absolutely, and that goes with the experience. Toy Dofer, again, an elite setter. She knows and feels her players and understands how to get them going. Florida State passing the ball pretty nicely and finding a good rhythm at the offensive end. When you look at Florida State, they come in at 8-2, notable win against Florida, albeit a team right now that's really struggling, having lost for the first time ever, ever, let me say that again, ever to Mississippi State. Your thoughts on Florida State and what Chris Poole wants to get them doing early on in this match? I think you're exactly right. The efficiency in the passing is what's so important, and that needs to be intentional. This is why you're seeing a back-to-back -back action between Florida State and Louisville. Both of them have good passing efficiencies. So it's about who can get the ball on the floor, who can terminate properly. You've got Morgan Chacon on the outside for Florida State, and you've got Anna DeBeer. So it's all a battle about who's going to side out first. Chasse with a nice kill, point possession back to Louisville. Just underway, opening set, tied at seven. Transition opportunity. And Chasse smartly off the top of the block, wearing number nine in the black jersey for Louisville. And Claire Chasse does a good job. That's one of her tendencies as an attacker. She goes high hands off the block, tries to aim it into position one, as you see. It's super effective and hard to defend. First ace of the match, that is Anna Stevenson. Had a nice conversation the other day with outstanding assistant coach Dan Meskin. I asked if Stevenson and the rest of the Louisville Cardinal, are they physical enough to compete for a national championship and get to a national semifinal first? And without hesitation, he said, absolutely yes. And I think the physicality comes, even though you have a couple of undersized hitter, it comes with experience as well, not being afraid to take those attacks. As you see Chasse go right down the seam of the block, but not being able to risk those moments, making sure that they're taking care of the, the little things, doing the right things. And that's what's propelling this Louisville offense. Stevenson continues to serve. Nice little mini run here for Stevenson. Had an ace. Tied at seven. Now the three nothing run. That ball hit out of bounds and Florida State might need a timeout at this particular point as Louisville is getting some mid set separation. I think Tori Dilfer, you pointed it out before first serve. I think, you know, if you're going to win a national championship or compete for one, you have to have absolutely a star at the setting position and Dilfer is one of those around the country. Another very nice bump set here in transition for Dilfer. And again, you see Claire Chasse take that line. She is either trying to find the hands of the right side blocker. You see her taking it Cloney, or she's trying to go high hands down the line, and she is so very successful at it. 
Really good delivery once again by Dilfer, the reigning ACC setter of the year. Louisville up early now, 12-7 in the first. And Paul, you know we talk about the stellar freshman at the libero position, Elena Scott. You see her numbers against the top 10, two top 10 teams. Right now, she's averaging just under four digs per set, which is added to the experience that Tor Tori Dilfer provides for this squad. And Anna Stevenson, very productive, very efficient against elite teams, the reigning national champions from Kentucky, and also at Nebraska for Louisville's first ever win against the Cornhuskers, 12 of 24 against Nebraska. And then when you look at Stevenson, uh, excuse me, 11 of 17 against Nebraska, 12 of 24 against Kentucky. So Stevenson and Scott, very deserving of those designations of player of the week and freshman of the week. Important side out, Carolyn Golden back now, the 5'9 senior out of Mandeville, Louisiana, back to serve for Florida State. Tessier, nice delivery into the middle once again to Corey Lewis. You talked about Florida State's win over Florida. 12 of 20 was Lewis, so can be very, very good out of the middle. And I think that is what Florida State is trying to establish in their offense. Tessier does a good job of that quick first tempo delivery to Corey Lewis out of the middle. A little bit away, trying to take Tillman away from that right side blocker. So setting up some good offense for Florida State. And we talked about it during the commercial, Jen. Florida State, and rightfully so, complimenting them and Louisville on their first ball contact. They got out of system a little bit. Immediately, Dilfer and Louisville took the lead. Florida State hitting 263, well above their season average, but Louisville right now hitting 353. Jones off the right side. Very, very nice delivery. And I mentioned Dan Meskey, and he had something interesting to say about Tori Dilfer and when she transferred from TCU and what areas she had to improve upon. And that was one of the areas she needed to be consistent setting behind her back, and especially to a hitter like Iko Jones. She's very vocal in her presence, and not necessarily in the way that she manhandles the ball. But Iko Jones needs to get a little bit more involved into this offense, especially behind the backs of Claire Chasse, as you see there, and Anna DeBeer on the left. Chasse hammering that ball to the floor on the overpass. Iko Jones, six foot two redshirt junior out of Kingston, Jamaica, 2.3 kills per set, hitting 230. This is a very balanced Louisville team. Most good teams are. And, and you that add ball a missed passer. out of bounds. Sorry about that. And you add a passer, it just elevates this team to know that they have threats on every end of the court. Yeah, timeout called by Florida State. We were tied at seven since that time. It's been a 9-2 run for Danny Busboom Kelly's Louisville Cardinals at Olympic Games for the United States when they won the gold medal. So pretty successful transition. And it's just a testament to the style of coaching that Danny Busboom Kelly provides for this global offense. She may not have all of the scouting reports. Her and Dan Meske work so well together to be so balanced for this global Cardinals team. Florida State needs to find some offensive rhythm. Nicely done. Sydney Connolly, 6'1 sophomore out of Oviedo, Florida, played 13 matches last year and gets a much needed side out kill and point for the visiting Seminoles. And although Florida State is down in this set, I've been very impressed with the activity that we've seen out of the middle. The middles are trying to find their setter, trying to run, and trying to score wherever they can. Iko Jones once again, just a little bit of a high set in the middle and letting Jones rise and crack that ball to the floor. And I like how Tori Dilfer moved her away from the right side, making her a little bit more active and really, really testing the defense. After a slow night on Friday, Chasse is 6 of 8 so far in the attack phase. And Jones deep into the cross court, one footed takeoff. Doesn't seem to matter, very effective. And it was a kind of unorthodox, almost a slide approach to that ball, a little bit too close to the net. But if that's the kink that they're trying to iron out, I'd say let Tori Dilfer and Iko Jones do it. Jacone's been pretty quiet so far. 
And DeBeer still looking for her first kill. Nice cover. There's that setter action that we talked about from Elena Scott. And how crucial is it to be able to have the second touch come from an actual setter? So a beautiful out-of-system ball delivered to Anna DeBeer for her to take a swing at it. Make a great point. You dig a lot of balls at a variety of positions. you got to have your libero be able to step in and deliver something that's really hittable. Joust coming, tip nicely to the floor once again by number 15, Sydney Connolly. Question for you, Jen. You played this game at a very, very high level for a long time. Setters, I mean, it's such a different combination of skills. Are you surprised that we've seen a couple of former setters be so good at transitioning into the underhand skill of receiving serve and digging? I don't think so. I think it's all about what type of player you are, what type of athlete. And Elena Scott is a phenomenal athlete just in general. Because if you've seen her attack a ball, she can do it all. So her being somewhat of an anomaly is also a benefit for Louisville Cardinals. Yeah, that's a great point and really good to see Elena Scott. What an addition she has been to this team. Remember Louisville last year, they were 15-3. and three. Remember, it was all ACC play. They lost to Washington in the second round. Quick question for you after this point. Scott serving, big lead here. Now for Louisville, nice play in transition once again. Emma Clothier getting the job. What's the feeling in and around the Louisville program since Danny Busboom Kelly has come and brought such an outstanding staff in terms of the trajectory of this program on a national scale? I mean, when we talk with Coach Dan Meske, he was saying that they're just taking care of the little things, like the rankings are exciting, but they're making sure that they are doing the right things in the gym, understanding the scouting report, and just making sure that they're playing Louisville Cardinal Volleyball. Clothier, once again, nice play on the slide, and Coach Meske also told us that under the leadership of Tori Dilfer, they're not shying away from talking about what are realistic goals for this year's Louisville team, and that means getting to a national semifinal. Very easy serve. And paying the price. Nice play out of the middle by Stevenson. Jones back to serve. Louisville hitting 429. Chasse leading the way. Six of eight, Anna DeBeer. Only three of six, and I say only because she's got two errors thrown in there. Kind of a slow start. Jones, nice play out of the back row off the edge. And I don't know if you see it, Paul. I see just a difference in the attack. You see that Louisville is always constantly attacking Tori Dilfer, making a beautiful delivery to Eichel Jones out of position one. There's been a lot of tips going over, and it's easy for Louisville to transition from Florida State's Yeah, attack. Scott was all, all over the previous one. Really good point. Chance in transition and going off speed once again. Good choice. And De Beer registers her fourth kill. Again, Louisville siding out in the high 70% of the time. So that is what is really making the case and them up by 10 in this first set. You will win a lot of sets, as you well know, if you're siding out at over 70%. Free ball here. Good first contact. Saved off the floor by Lauren Burroughs, wearing number 23 in white for the Seminoles. And again, Burroughs, good contact. That ball just missed out of bounds. No, they got a touch off the top of the block. Nice trajectory, hard swing by 14 and Black to Beer. And a good rally by both sides. Florida State needs to settle a little bit more, not being so erratic in their contact, because Louisville Cardinals are just running some smooth transition offense right now. That's a great point. Off the block deflection, perfect contact. Off serve, receive, off the dig. That's a quality contact there. Swing by De Beer. Off the edge of the block and down. Louisville is playing the game of volleyball at a very, very high level. Remember, we were tied at seven, and then after that, it was all the Cardinals. They win it 
25 to 13. Up. Schedule has been heavy because a lot of these top teams don't just want to play cake matches. They want to make sure that they're setting themselves up in the RPI ranking and also to be able to potentially host. Absolutely right. Texas has not, and Stanford, Stanford's basically played everybody that's potentially a national semifinal or certainly regional final team. Opening set, Jones leads the way for the Louisville offense. They hit an even 500. Florida State, not bad at 222. Chasse was 6 of 8. Uh, Anna DeBeer, 6 of 9. Jones, 4 of 8. Hit 500, no errors. For Florida State, adjustments, Jen. How do they hang for a longer period of time with the undefeated Louisville Cardinals? I think it starts a lot with their defense. They're really scattered on the back line. They need to make sure that they're spreading, reading the seams and angles aside from their blocker's arm. So playing better angles and making sure that they're ready to move forward in defense. DeBeer going high flat once again after a slow start and a couple of errors. Anna DeBeer last year, an honorable mention All-American, and as mentioned, the ACC Freshman of the Year going back to serve. Elena Scott, who will certainly be a candidate for that award if she continues to play at this kind of level. Has 18 aces so far on the year coming into this match, and as you mentioned, averaging just under four digs per set. Again, with the miscommunication on the side of Florida State. Nice answer that time. Corey Lewis going one-on-one -on -one and stopping Anna Stevenson. And that's just a, a way that is a little bit predictable. Louisville does a good job of setting first tempo first so that the ball can be terminated as quickly as possible. And Anna Stevenson being as efficient and effective as she is out of the middle, that was something that... Lewis was ready and waiting to put back. You talked about what an outstanding athlete Elena Scott is at the Libero, the 5'9 freshman. Stevenson as well, touches 10-11. That is really impressive and is quick off the floor. Good play to recycle and there's De Beer looking in the cross court once again. And missed it just one. And again, even in that situation, we know that left side volleyball is heavy at a system for collegiate volleyball. But Tori Dilfer had three options even in that situation. Yeah, that's something for people at home to watch. Just look at the number of times Tori Dilfer is just, just like here. Perfect reception, run the offense, a nice dig into the cross court by Burroughs. Doing a nice job as a defensive specialist. Burroughs again. And Stevenson finally off the edge. Florida State digging a lot of balls, but they just don't have enough terminators right now. And again, digging a lot of balls, but is it good contact? They are just touching the balls, but not necessarily getting it touches to be able to transition into play. A player like Anna Stevenson, who runs so well behind Tori Dilfer, behind her setter with that quick arm, there's no way that they can touch it. Good block touch. Dilfer again looking for Chasse. Outside hitters for Louisville looking for a lot of high flat. That one missed just over the top of the block. And Morgan Chacon for Florida State is a player that I'd like to see going right now. She hasn't notched anything in the kill category. She's hitting at a negative percentage. So her finding her game, making sure that it's one point at a, as a, at a time is what I'm looking for for Florida State. In a little bit of trouble, Chasse tipping that ball off the top of the block. Exactly right about uh, Chacon. She is 0 for 9 with two errors and is uh, heavily relied upon, averaging almost three kills per set. Very good all-around player. Good dig numbers as well. Had 13 kills, 23 digs on Friday night in the win over the Fighting Irish. Ball set a little bit too tight. A rare setting error, in my opinion, by Tori Dilfer. Comes from a very notable athletic family. Father Trent played college football at Fresno State and then went on to have a tremendously distinguished NFL career. 14 years 
five different teams. Boy, you gotta make that dig. Gotta make that dig. There's Trent Dilfer. Great experience to be able to watch your children compete at a very high level, and Dilfer has become elite once again, the reigning ACC setter of the year. Nice touch. Again, look at the reception on that ball alone. Hopefully, Tori Dilfer is okay as we see her get up. But again, the delivery on the ball, making it so easy for Tori Dilfer to set her hitters is what the contact is for Louisville. You know, use the term ahead in the point, and Louisville is ahead in a lot of these points because of the quality of their ball control. Lily Tessier, six foot three, redshirt junior out of Fort Myers, Florida, back to serve. Another perfect pass. Tied at five. Look at Scott digging that ball right on target. On and target, leads to a quick point. <laughs> Yeah, it's one thing, as you pointed out, Jen, to dig a ball or to make contact as Florida State is, but it's another to take your team from digging a ball to being right in system. Florida State scrambling. That ball stuffed, but ruled just out of bounds. And you see, even on that opportunity, you see that Conley didn't really transition. She didn't really get a full attack. It kind of surprised her, so she had nowhere to go with that ball. It was just lucky enough for Louisville to block it out. One of the best blocking teams in the country. Louisville been a little quiet in that category so far. Nothing quiet about that. Nice play once again by Anna Stevenson registering the kill on the slide. And I think they've been so quiet on what they do best because their offense is just clicking on all cylinders. They're hitting right now on the match, 408. Oh. Wow, that's just wonderful transition play by Louisville again. And it almost looks like Florida State is not ready. The ball is moving way too fast for them to even get settled to know what's happening to them. That's how fast Louisville Cardinals runs their offense. Florida State got to start hitting the ball somewhere other than area five where Elena Scott is. And on cue, a nice block that time by DeVere along with Stevenson. You know a little bit about blocking, don't you? Former All-American, led the country in hitting. I know you're offensive-minded, but have you seen numbers like that? What a combination put up there uh, by those three players. Amaya Tillman, the reigning ACC Defensive Player of the Year, along with Stevenson and Iko Jones as a right-side blocker, putting up huge numbers. And you have to know that all of these people are on the same team. So that's what's so staggering about those numbers is Louisville being the blocking force that they are. That means high hands, good quality touches. And when you have someone that transitions balls like Elena Scott does, they are really an unstoppable team. De Beer with a smart shot into the cross court, looking for area four. And getting that ball to the floor, and the run continues now for Louisville. Remember, we were tied at five. And now De Beer and the Cardinal, very similar to the opening set when they pulled away and eventually won at 25-13. Here is Jones, 5-2 run for the fifth-ranked undefeated Cardinal. And that's going to be four contacts, a miscue by the visiting Seminoles. And you got to wonder, Paul, why a lot of balls that Tessia is getting in a good position that she's forcing to the middle instead of trying to get 
Morgan Chacon a little bit more active on that left pin because that'll just open up the net for the middles for Florida State. That ball, a good point. That ball danced on the top of the tape, still looking at Chacon. She's had nine swings, no kills to her credit so far. Louisville again at 11-0, a very impressive run through the non-conference. Wins over Purdue, Nebraska, and in-state rival Kentucky. And very, very notably over Purdue. Purdue just recently knocked uh, Ohio State, the third-ranked team in the country, out of the undefeated column. Purdue won that. Wisconsin lost to Maryland in five. And we've already talked about Mississippi State's stunning up upset. You had that one, Jen. At home, that was in Gainesville over Florida. And what a surprising yet thrilling, especially the conference is playing one another back to back. That means you have to make some quick adjustments on the offensive end. And Mississippi State really did a good job to counteract and get well, a win. They, lo they lost in five the night before and then came right back and won in five for the first time ever beating the Gators. Nice play on the slide once again. Really good combination between Dilfer and Stevenson. And it is a really beautiful opportunity to watch Anna Stevens. She's so quick off the floor. She has, again, an unorthodox swing. But when we talked with Coach Dan, he says that that swing is as effective and as powerful, which makes her very, very physical. Well, she hit 406 last year, was 10th best in terms of efficiency in the entire country. She's up that to 454 so far on the year. So I would, I would, I would uh, shudder the idea of changing her arm <laughs> swing. So far, pretty good numbers. What don't. Don't fix what ain't broke, right? Exactly right. Exactly right. You led the nation in hitting efficiency back in 2006, if I'm not mistaken. Is that yes. right, Jen? Yes. And you hit yes. 445. That is just an astronomical number. There we go. That team was 31 and 3. And you look at the team now, it's just a testament being an uh, being an alum of this program. I'd love to see that Danny Bustum Kelly is really elevating and taking it to the next level. One more note on your outstanding career when you were back here in 2005. So far, the 11-0 start is the best since your team started 20-0. And, and that's, that's no hard feelings. That's just a love of the game. And you'd love to see your team that you graduated from and played for doing so well. They are doing well. Make no question about that. They're on top. One set to none in 15-11. Jen Anna Stevenson, you know this position well, is having a fabulous season so far. One of the reasons why this offense is so hard to stop. And you look at the tempo that she provides. She does it at the service end as well. But the first tempo, such a quick jump off of the floor, very dynamic. She's right now at a 444, only five kills on the match. Attracts a lot of attention. A couple of service errors in this set, but good pressure applied by Louisville. Again at 11-0, Florida State at 8-2. Louisville, an easy win over Miami at home. Held the hurricane to zero hitting. That means the same number of errors as kills. Well, uh, Florida State was beating Notre Dame three sets to one and also held them down significantly below their season average in terms of efficiency. And De Beer. Missed a couple of balls out of bounds, and now it's the Florida State block getting a little bit of payback. And Conley and Lewis all over that ball. You know they're they're pressuring the outside. They're pressuring Anna DeBeer to really find some efficiency. So a double block is always going to potentially be on Anna DeBeer, and they'll leave Amaya Tillman behind the setter alone for a single block. Nice response by the visiting Seminoles, now trailing by only two, 15-13. Again, if you're just joining us, Louisville tied at seven, but then went on a big run and closed out the opening set 25-13. De Beer again.
Good contacts now by Florida State. Lots of options. Can they win a long rally? Not this time. DeBeer threw a seam in the block and down. You see a good delivery again by Tori Dolfer. Just super fast tempo out to that pin. Anna DeBeer finding that seam of the block. We've been talking a lot about the libero for Louisville, Elena Scott, but also Emery Dutz doing a very nice job by the Seminoles and the response at the net now for Louisville with the stuff. Scott had 17 digs in the quick sweep over the Miami Hurricane. Nice dig again. They got to start. They got to stop hitting in her direction. And again. You see with the opportunity of that first contact in transition, Louisville always has three hitters ready to attack. Louisville always ready. You see Florida State really trying to find their niche. Morgan Chacon really getting frustrated in her game. You see her take that swing thinking that it's in. She's trying to find a way to get going, and it's just not working out right now. Really good effort by both of these teams, but quality defense once again by Scott and the rest of her Cardinals teammates. And only a freshman, she is going to be around. And I think she's going to go down maybe as the all-time record holder in terms of digs if she keeps this up. Pretty safe prediction. I absolutely think so. That record held now by one of my dear friends, Caitlin Welsh. Fabulous play in transition once again. Chasse, once again, keyed by the dig of Scott. Just quality touches. Four hitters that time prepared to attack for the Louisville Cardinals. Right now, Elena Scott, albeit only a freshman out of Louisville, putting on a clinic in terms of what it looks like to be a left side defender. Not only digging balls, but controlling them and right on target. And as you've pointed out many times, right into the hands of Tori Dilfer with lots of options. Timeout called. Nice little mini run once again by Louisville on top 19-13. And we talked about the offensive firepower that the Louisville Cardinals have right now. They're at almost an 82% for siding out and getting terminating those balls. So Florida State needs to get quality touches. They need to relax their shoulders a little bit, absorb the ball so that it can stay on their side and they're able to transition into their offense. You got to be tough up the middle, and that means your libero and also quality play from the setting position. And uh, coming back for her COVID year, the 5'11 graduate student out of Los Gatos, California. Tremendous stability and some athleticism at the net as well for number 12. And Coach Dan Meski says that she's the coach on the court, and that is a viable asset that a Louisville squad really needs to just continuously become the elite program that they know they can be. Strong culture headed up by Danny Busboom Kelly in her fifth year as head coach after coming over after a very successful stint at her alma mater in Nebraska but also Tori Dilfer, among others, clearly the leaders on this team. I know, I know it's early, and we've just started conference play, and you look around the country and the strength of the Big Ten and the strength of Texas once again, but is Louisville legitimately a contender to get to the national semifinals? I think that Louisville is a contender. We talk about their offensive power, uh, firepower and how balanced in their attack, both ends of the court, they have good serve reception, amazing serve reception. They're top leaders in the blocking category. They've got pin hitters. They've got all of the components. And then you put them in the ACC conference. Who see, we're seeing Georgia Tech. We're seeing Pittsburgh really taking and setting the tone and really making the name for the ACC conference. Nice play in transition once again after a dig from Scott Hill by DeBeer. All right, let's keep it in the ACC. 
do you put Pittsburgh into that conversation as well based on what you've seen so far on the year in terms absolutely. of getting to the national semis? Absolutely, and I think that pressure on the pre-conference schedule is what's going to separate both the Louisville Cardinals and Pittsburgh into not having to play each other. So it spreads the conference, it spreads the seeding, and it only bodes well for the ACC conference. And both Louisville and the Pitt Panthers have been very impressive in the non-conference, not only because they're both undefeated and very highly nationally ranked, because they've played a really challenging schedule. Perfect pass again. And a block by Stevenson. And going back and looking historically, and somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but I did look, at, I take a pretty thorough look, and Florida State, is the only ACC team ever to make it to the national semifinals, and that was under Chris Poole in 2011. So we're talking about two teams in the ACC having the possibility, but other teams will certainly get a vote. Louisville on a very strong run here, very similar to the opening set. Now just a couple of points away at 23-14. Service error by Jones, but no damage done, making it 23 to 15, and Florida State will have some major adjusting to do, but uh, they're hitting 083 so far on the match and minus 056 here in the second set. Louisville now with five blocks and 40 digs. Five blocks, 40 digs, and we haven't even finished two sets. And that really is an astronomical number considering that Florida State only has 27. So that's what I was mentioning about those quality touches to be allowed to run your offense. And right now, Florida State's just not getting it done. Here's De Beer, first of a many set points. And another service error. In club, Paul, we call those beer points. Okay. Not De Beer, not De Beer, but beer not points. Not De Beer, beer okay. points. You okay, never miss a serve on set point. Chacon really been a struggle so far against this block and defense. Set point again. And quickly there on the overpass or over dig, if you will, Claire. Chasse with a tap down and Danny Busboom Kelly and her Cardinals with a very, very comfortable two sets to none lead. They won the first 25-13 and won the second. Where does uh, Florida State find a way? to get back in this match and conjure up some offense. I think we talked about it. Emma Clothier needs to make sure that she's a little bit more effective. And Florida State has got to find a way, no matter what, to get Morgan Chacon at least a little bit more involved in the offense. Right now, she's hitting at a goose egg. Morgan Chacon, a key to the offensive effort for Florida State, 0 for 15. And uh, Connolly at 4 of 13. So those numbers, very, very hard to overcome. Nice contact again, and Reed once again by Scott. Chasse with the opening kill in the third set. Chasse having a big afternoon after struggling a little bit against Miami on Friday night. 11 of 16 with only one error. Nice play out of the right back. Lauren Burroughs, number 23 in white, has been exceptional for Florida State at the defensive end. Going to try to track this one down. But Iko Jones with a big rip over the block off the right side. And you are absolutely right. Burroughs is 10 digs on the match. So she is getting quality contacts. It's just about finding a way to get your hitters involved. And I think that comes at the hands of Lily Tessier to really figure out the offense for Florida State. And Burroughs is playing part-time as a DS, having a big impact at 23 digs on Friday night at Notre Dame. Oh, 
Chacon still looking for her first kill. Nice and smartly done by Tori Dilfer on the second contact. A very welcome transfer from TCU, where she spent her first couple of seasons. What an impact she's had on this program. <laughs> Elena Scott again. Seems like a little thing. Looks like an easy play. That was absolutely perfect delivery. And it's almost like the Louisville Cardinals right now are really just fine-tuning a little bit of their offense you see that Amaya Tillman moves away from the block finds the seam and that's something that we're not used to seeing from Amaya, Amaya Tillman trying to get active in that offense really nice kill off the right side Sydney Connolly the 6'1 sophomore excuse me that was Clothier putting that ball away I want to ask you about Amaya Tillman hit 280 last year okay oh, oh just okay as a middle attacker hit 433 this year what's the difference the difference is the ball control that Louisville is presenting. And they want to get her more involved on the offensive end because she absolutely does it on the blocking end. So those numbers, almost doubling her numbers from last year, causing her to be a little bit more effective, just adding more weapons to the artillery for Louisville. The 6'3 junior out of Topeka, Kansas. Two kills per set. We gave you her hitting efficiency. Had 15 total blocks against the likes of Kentucky and Nebraska. High swing by Jones. Recycle the point. Chasse. A re excuse me, that was De Beer off the left side. De Beer now 10 of 20 with five hitting errors. Hits 306 on the year. She's hitting only 250 so far on the afternoon. Perfect pass again, this time by number 14, De Beer. And you notice that in this rotation, you have Iko Jones, Amaya Tillman, and you have Anna De Beer on that left side. So, again, offensive weapons, and you see that Iko Jones likes to come in front of the setter, allowing Amaya Tillman to get that kill behind. Good choice and quickly off the block and out of bounds and Louisville is running away with this one already up two sets to none. And I don't think Florida State is doing a good job of reading the defense. You know, they're not making sure that they're placing these balls, albeit they are free balls, but they are not causing Louisville to be disrupted in their transition offense at all. Finally, a kill down the left side. I think that was Morgan Chacon. It was actually Audrey Koenig as she rotates yeah, Koenig out. Yeah, came on. Yep, thank you. But Carolyn at least some Golden production. Serve. Right? Some, at least some yes, production not, on the left near, side. Well, this is going to be a challenge for Florida State all season long. If you can't score off the left side, I mean, women's college volleyball, as you pointed out, is a heavy left side transition sport. you got to be able to score from over there. Here's Jones. Very easy serve and perfectly handled by Dukes. And predictably to Corey Lewis. As it should have been, I think that a lot of the action from Florida State, when they do get a handle on their first contact balls, needs to come out of the middle because the left pins are not getting it done for Florida State right now. So Florida State gives themselves chances. They're working hard at the defensive end. And then finally, I mentioned it earlier, Morgan Chacon gets her first kill, number three in white. But you look at the dig numbers, 31. Pretty respectable through two plus a little bit of action here in the third. And volleyball being a momentum sport, an up and down sport, you can't get a quality contact by Caroline Golden to get some transition offense and then go behind and miss a serve. So it's staggering how they're not really setting themselves up to 
go on a run. Mia Stander wearing number 17 in black for Louisville, the 5'3 senior. Service phase has been a little bit sloppy so far for Louisville. They're, gonna, they're ahead in this match very easily. They have one ace to go along with seven errors, and Stander will stay on. Back-to-back yes, -back service errors. There is Stevenson who had a huge week. <laughs> Not only all those wins, but got engaged. Congratulations. A little bit more important, I would say, than winning the ACC Player of the Week. Nice response out of the middle by Florida State. Clothier getting that ball to the floor. So far, Stevenson, five of nine with one error, also credited for participating in four blocks. He's got four block assists. Maya Tillman there just overruns that behind the setter for that first tempo. After the nice cover by Scott, Chasse off the edge of the block, number nine in black. 14 kills, 21 swings for Chasse, hitting over 600. It's been all Louisville, 11-0. Started uh, conference play on Friday, beat Miami three sets to none, where Florida State was winning at Notre Dame. Service winner. Tessier just moves a little bit slow to the ball. Almost didn't register that Dupes got the ball up. Louisville won the opening set 25-13. Won the second 25-16. Dupes right on target. Nice run through the middle by Florida State. Again, Clothier being available, you would think that she would go behind the setter because Claire Chasse moved in front. But good job by Clothier of putting the ball away. She leads Florida State right now with eight kills, hitting at 300. I like the middles for Florida State. They're just getting not nearly enough production, if hardly any at all. Iko Jones with a kill out of the middle. But and just not any production at all off the left side. And that's what's so difficult about being a middle, especially when the ball control isn't available to your team. As much of a lethal threat as you want to be, transition is often hard for a middle to make sure that they're scoring the points for their team that they can. Smart shot by Jones. Ball set a little too tight, but making something happen for number 15 in black, now with nine kills on 20 swings. And I like to see Aiko Jones get going again. Like I said, she's not necessarily the vocal leader, but she does provide the energy for this squad. So she's wanting to make sure that everybody's involved and keeping it happy as you see the relationship between her and Tori Dilfer. But I'd love to see her just put a couple more balls away on that right side. Chasse, oh, just missed that over the end line. Gives us a chance to remind folks about the challenge system. Challenge ball in or out, ball off a player either at the net in the back row. Net violation, three meter line foot fault or also foot fault at the service line. And in the ACC and most of the other major conferences, all of the members, and we will have a challenge, all of the members have agreed to go with quote unquote the new experimental challenge system, which rather than using three, and whether you have it uh, upheld or overturned, you've used it, you lose it. Now in the ACC, the SEC, the Pac-12, the Big 12, the Big 10, you start with two challenges. As long as your challenge is upheld, then you keep it. So theoretically, you have an infinite number. Which system do you prefer, Jen? I prefer this system because it allows for strategic use of the challenge in the right opportunity. Before, in the previous system, I thought that a lot of coaches were using it as a strategy for a timeout, but now they have to make sure that they're holding these close to their chest and making the decisions at the right time. I guess wrong most of the time, so I will 
keep my I'm going to say sealed. that's out. I'm going to say that's out, Paul. All right, I am. I am going to. I am going to completely agree with you <laughs> that that ball is out of bounds, and so Louisville will have one challenge remaining. The call will stand. It was called out, and so one challenge remaining for Danny Busboom Kelly and the Louisville Cardinals, and it is 14 to eight. And even in that position, I think that Danny Busboom Kelly might have needed to tell her team something to be able to use that timeout because they are up 14-9. A service winner by Tessier, Lily Tessier, the six foot three red shirt junior. Playing at the setting position, obviously can be offensive minded. Chance for Florida State to get back in this set. Nice touch once again by Scott, working her way towards a new career high in digs. Corey Lewis again. And if Louisville isn't ready for that quick transition because they're more so, Florida State is more so forcing the middle at this point, Corey Lewis being up and available. And with that first tempo, Corey Lewis being able to pull it away, Tori Dilfour has to be prepared to know that the offense is coming out of the middle right now for Florida State. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I like the Libero dupes. I like Tessier. And the two middles so far for Florida State have been effective and competitive, but just nothing off the outside. Side out score here for the Louisville Cardinal. Undefeated, ranked number five, and rolling at home on this Sunday afternoon against Florida State. Well, Paul, we've been talking a lot about libero for Louisville Cardinals, Elena Scott, and she has her career high tonight at 19 digs. She's just really getting quality touches to allow the Louisville Cardinals to set up their offense. Tori Dilfer doing a phenomenal job of keeping first tempo. But just look at the placement of the majority of Elena Scott's transition balls. It's just been a remarkable thing to watch. Tremendous and mature transition from a high school senior setter last year to starting for one of the top teams in the country and doing a beautiful job of it. Roll shot off the left side. Ball put to the floor by Audrey Koenig. Golden defensive specialist will come on once again. Florida State might be on their last gasp here. Lost the opening set 25-13, second 25-16. Hanging in here, 15-12. Nice quick play out of the middle to Stevenson. Nice pass and nice separation yep. to spread the net. Stevenson moving in front with a 31, having Eichel Jones behind. So trying to have Florida State's blockers make a decision. Alexa Hendricks coming on, number four in black as a DS with that first contact and serve receive. And notice that Elena Scott has now moved to position six. You've got Alexa Hendricks still playing those angles in, in zones four and five, but still quality touches able to transition offense for Louisville. Good cover by Hendricks. Jones out of the back row. Tell you what. Jen, Florida State does some pretty good things, but they just cannot convert in transition at anywhere near a high enough rate to compete with Louisville right now. And even in that transition ball delivered to the right side for Florida State, it needed to be a little bit higher and a little bit closer to the net so that the ball is moving forward, the attackers are moving forward, gaining momentum. Now 17-12. Nice block, but there's going to be a net violation. Stevenson was reaching so far over the net, just brushed the top of the tape, number 11 in black. And that's what I was discussing. You see that Morgan Chacon was at the 10-foot line trying to transition. That gives Louisville's blockers way too much time to be able to connect and, and close. Impressive hang time that time by Stevenson. And coming right back after a perfect pass by Scott.
DeBeer back to serve, 10 of 21 so far on the afternoon. DeBeer this time, number 14 in black with perfect contact. Timeout called by Florida State. Now it's a 19-13 advantage. Current set for Louisville, but hitting at a 565. And Florida State, again, doing some good things, now getting better at the touches. They're just not able to terminate those balls on the left side. And Morgan Chacon is really suffering tonight. That's out. I'm, I'm guaranteeing that won't happen again. <laughs> There is Burroughs, who's been very impressive in part-time play. Missed that out of bounds, but uh, Lauren Burroughs out of Marietta, Georgia. 2.4 digs per set last year. She's up that a little bit and had 23 digs playing just as a DS on Friday night. And right now she's at 12 for a squad like Louisville, who is really pounding the ball. You haven't seen much placement. Again, Florida State started with a little bit of placement early in this match. And Louisville is just taking it to her again. 12 digs for Lauren Burroughs. Serving will be a topic of conversation, make no doubt about that. 20 to 15 is the advantage, but nine service errors against just a couple of aces. A little bit careless, a little bit for Louisville in the service phase. Here is Chacon back to serve, trying to keep Florida State in this match. Got to make a move now, running out of time. Good read. And to the floor once again by Amaya Tillman. Jamie Vassalou, backup uh, senior 5-5 setter out of Bloomington, Illinois, has come on. Tillman had a very, very impressive stretch. 15 blocks against Kentucky, the defending national champions and at Nebraska. Really good, good kill off, yeah, really good kill <laughs> off the left side by Koenig. And again, we talk about Florida State, they do good things. You see that pass by Dupes. You see her getting in transition, nice kill on the left side. They just need to consistently do more and I think that's what they're fighting with is consistency. Trying to put some service pressure on Louisville. That ball just out of bounds. And now Louisville a couple of points away from improving to a perfect 12-0. Chasse has been very impressive. 14 of 21. Only one hitting error, hitting 619. That ball kept off the floor, but that's going to be four contacts. And I think right now, as you see Danny Bustum Kelly really urging her team, you have to do the little things right. They're getting a little bit sloppy, a little bit too relaxed, and you have to always play with that sense of urgency to know when to not let up. Nice off-speed shot. Very smart shot right into the donut hole. Get the ball to the floor away from a good defensive team in Louisville. On, Crowd getting just a little antsy at the LNN Federal Credit Union Arena. Michael Jones. That'll settle things down a little bit now, just a couple of points away. Next up for Louisville, it will be at Clemson. That'll be on the ACC network. That ball rattling through the block and down as Florida State trying to stay alive. That kill by Audrey Koenig was her eighth on the match. She's hitting at a 421. So again, a little glimmer of hope. It's just about consistency. That set by Lily Tessier was a little behind her. Oh, 
Once again, rattling through the block of beer. That, that's a great point you made of, about uh, the outside hitter doing a nice job. Koenig, uh, Koenig uh, that's a very, very nice match. It was just she didn't get much support. And now five match points for Louisville. Mentioned Louisville at Clemson. It'll be Florida State and North Carolina State coming up on Friday. Match point. That ball's off the floor. Stevenson going off speed for the win. A very impressive afternoon, Jan Hoffman, for your alma mater as expected. And again, both digs, both transition opportunities from Louisville come off the hands of Elena Scott, Tori Dilfer, and Anna Stevenson, rightfully so, off a good weekend for her with the kill to seal it. Louisville improves to 12 and 0. They're going to be moving up in the national rankings. It's already the highest ever at five. Their third straight sweep hit 439 on the afternoon. 53 digs, a new career high for Elena Scott with 22.